Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonso. Today we will be taking a look at Bread and Circuses, the Roman passion for chariot racing. However, before we begin, just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. When we think of ancient Rome, generally, spectacle comes to mind. Rome had a penchant to do everything to the grandiose. The immediate Roman spectacle that comes to mind is the Flavian Amphitheater, commonly known as the Colosseum. This magnificent structure could seat up to as many as 87,000 people. Gladiatorial bouts reigned supreme among the Roman blood sports. However, did you know that Romans were even more passionate about chariot racing? That's right, the Circus Maximus was the largest venue for public games. Ludi Circensis in Latin. The Circus Maximus could accommodate 150,000 spectators and became the model for all circuses throughout the Roman Empire. At its height, the Empire proudly boasted 60 tracks throughout the Roman world. Ludi were often connected to Roman religious festivals. Ludi were also sponsored by leading Romans or the Roman state for the benefit of the Roman people, Populus Romanus, and of course, the gods. The Ludi at the circus began with a flamboyant parade, much like a triumphal procession, which marked the purpose of the games as well as the introduction of the participants. The teams, or factions as they were known, were adorned in symbolic colors. Green represented spring, red represented summer, blue autumn, and white for winter. During the Roman Republic, the Aedils were responsible for the games. The Aedes was an elected office and responsible for the maintenance of all public buildings. This was considered an important post in order to observe the responsibility of future local leaders who sought higher political office, or cursus honorarum. Legend has it that Romulus, the founder of Rome, used horse racing and chariot racing as the ploy to invite the men from neighboring towns to celebrate the festival of Consuelia in honor of the gods. While the guests were occupied with the spectacle, Romulus and his men seized and carried off the Sabine women whom they took as wives. Did the Romans invent chariot racing? No. Most likely it was the Mycenaean Greeks who originated the sport. We have seen from pottery and wall paintings that the sport was quite popular. However, the first literary reference comes from Homer's Iliad. A chariot race takes place at the funeral games of Patroclus. The participants included Diomedes, Iomelus, Antiochus, Menelaus, and Meriones. The victor was Diomedes, and his prize was a slave girl and a cauldron. Tradition also has it that chariot racing was the event that founded the Olympic Games. According to Pindar, King Oenomas challenged suitors for his daughter Hippodamea to a race. The king was defeated by Pelops, who then founded the games in honor of his victory and prenuptials. Chariots were the battlefield vehicles of their day. However, once chariots were phased out by cavalry, chariot racing remained popular as sport racing. As chariot racing became a more organized sport, how did the size of the chariots change? In order to gain more speed, the chariots became much smaller and sleeker. These chariots looked nothing like the war chariots featured in such films like Ben-Hur. Racing chariots were constructed of a single beam of wood that was bent into form. The platform was made of strands of leather to add to the flexibility and shock absorption. The charioteer was also taught to stand as far back as possible in what essentially was a basket. This was done to keep as much of the weight of the yoke off the horses. 
Lastly, the wheels were very small and made of a single piece of wood steamed into a circle. With regard to the charioteers, younger men who were smaller in stature were sought out. It was not surprising to see teenage boys begin training as charioteers. As for the horses, Romans favored the North African Berber horses, barbs as they are commonly known. These hardy desert horses were prized for their speed, endurance, compact size, and thick neck. Overall, the perfect horse for this racing spectacle. The city of Carthage eventually became the center of all horse trade. Typically, a charioteer raced with four horses pulling his chariot. However, only the two middle horses were harnessed. This meant that the charioteer could only control the two middle horses. The two outer horses were loosely attached by the head. The challenge was to keep the team running parallel and at top speed. The circus was often filled with crashes, which the Romans called shipwrecks. Due to the malaise, the arena essentially became an obstacle course. How dangerous was chariot racing? In a word, deadly. There were very few rules to the sport, and accidents as well as death is what thrilled the spectators. Records show that the average charioteer often began his career in his late teens and was often killed within a 10-year span. These young men had strength and stamina and were heralded as Rome's greatest athletes. They had to round the arena seven times, which was roughly three and a half miles, and traveling at speeds ranging from 25 to 55 miles per hour. The greatest of all the charioteers was Scopus. His champion won 2,048 races, yet tragically lost his life during a race. He was only 26 years old. On a final note, the popularity of chariot racing lasted over a thousand years. It only fell out of popularity due to the expense of hosting such lavish spectacles. This concludes part one of Bread and Circuses, the Roman passion for chariot racing. In part two, we will discuss your comments and questions. As a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. We have also listed for your convenience our email address and Instagram information. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Traveler's Tales. Tartistos. <laughs>